Hey everyone, it's Max and welcome back to our Python tutorial. So in the last tutorial we saw a little bit of an introduction on arrays or Python lists and how they work and how they store data and we looked at that because we looked at this pygame.key.getPressed method which returns to us um, an array that has an index for each of the keys and it allows us to check if a key is pressed or not. So that's what we get back here is we get this huge, huge list um, or this huge, huge array of all the keys and for each individual key, we can check if it has been pressed or not. So one more thing quickly before we get into looking at the keys, we first have to understand how we can access the keys. And so we'll again look at that by printing something and you will have noticed that for print I can do the open and close parentheses or I can just put a space here whatever it is that you prefer, whatever you know you're used to, or if you're not used to anything, you can do whatever you like, um, as long as you're consistent, probably that's best. All right, so how do we know what key is pressed? So if we go into Pygame, Pygame actually has for each key um, certain values. So for each key, there is a certain value that's saved, and we can check if that key is, um, is pressed. So for example, if we're gonna use the spacebar, we're going to go into Pygain, and we want to access the spacebar um, key. So we're going to go into Pygain, and then we're going to type in k underscore space like this. And what that does is this is the spacebar key that's saved in Pygain. So this pretty much gives us the reference to that spacebar key. Um, and so if we run this, and we'll see in a second why we're running this, what we get back if we run this is we get back a number. And now the reason that this is important is because this number that we get from the spacebar key that's saved in Pygame is actually the index of the spacebar um, or of the spacebar key that we get when we call this get pressed method on keys. So really what we get here is we get a list of all the keys and to find the spacebar we have to look at the spacebar key in this array. So for example what we get back would be something like, and now this isn't exactly how it's structured, but it would be something like the up key and then we'd have the down key and then we have the left and maybe then we have the space or something and there's stuff before, uh, there's stuff after, and there's stuff before. And again, this is probably not the exact order, but this is just to show you the example. And so we get this huge list that contains all the keys. And to access the spacebar key, the one that we're really interested in, we have to know what index it has in this whole list that contains all the keys. And so that's why it's important um, to know that this k space is a number, and that number corresponds to the index in this list of all the keys that is returned to us. All right, so if you understand that, great. If not, then we'll just continue working with it and you'll probably see in a second what I mean with that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another if statement. And we're gonna see if, and now we're gonna look at the pressed keys, if our pressed keys and now the element, so again, we get this whole list of all the keys um, returned to us. And the key that we want to look at is the pygame.k space. Oops, sorry. k underscore space. So key underscore and then what key it is, it's the space key. And the reason that we do the pygame is just because it's everything that we're doing is contained inside pygame. And it's all made consistent inside of pygame. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Actually, maybe something that would be interesting to see is before we even check this if statement is just to print out what that value would be. So before we go any further, let's just print out whatever the element in this list is, just so to really understand what we're doing. So we'll run this and save that one more time. And now what we see here is we get an output, just a bunch of zeros. So we're not pressing the spacebar key. And now let me move this over a little bit. If I press the spacebar, we see all of a sudden get a bunch of ones returned here. So that's what's going on 
um, when I print the or when I press the spacebar key. So let me just run that again just to keep that running in the background, but to stop all of this um, spamming of numbers. And well, great. Now everything froze because of it. So let's just force quit this. Okay, and while yeah, there we go. And while that's quitting, okay, good. So and maybe we'll also just close that and again force quit this so that we've reset everything but yeah so that's pretty much what's going on um, when we press the spacebar key is that it's continuously being checked and we also see that you know it's continuously being checked at a certain frame rate and everything um, and so that's the values that are stored in this press keys all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to check if press keys and now if the press keys of or if the press keys is equal to the following value so we notice that what we get returned from here is either zeros or ones so if the value contained in press keys for the space key is equal to 1 then what we're going to do is we're going to increment our um, Y coordinate a little bit. So we're going to make our block, our rectangle, move up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to say Y is equal to, and now maybe we say Y plus 5 or something like that. But remember there's a shorthand for that. We can also say just whoop, plus equals 5. So that's the same thing as saying um, equals Y plus 5. So we're just going to increment Y by 5 if the space key is pressed. That's what we're going to do right now. And so if we run this, and remember the y coordinates is the up and down coordinates. So if we run this, what should happen for us is once we space the space key, we see that we're moving down. Now, this isn't exactly what we wanted, but every time we press the space key, we see that we're moving down, which is already a great start. Now, we have a little bit of a problem of this blue line appearing as kind of a trail. Um, and the reason that's happening is because we continuously draw a new rectangle. So what we're doing is, and that's also why we save these x and y coordinates from before, we're continuously incrementing our y coordinate by 5 every time we have the spacebar held tone for every tick of the computer, and we're creating a new rectangle, and we're drawing that rectangle to our screen again. But all of the old rectangles are still there. They're not being removed. So that's why we have this kind of tail that's going on. And to avoid that, the one thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our screen and we're just going to access the fill um, method. And again, here we're going to put in a color, uh, an RGB color, and we can actually define the color black to be 0, 0, 0. So that's the same as the tuple we defined above. So this here is the color blue, which has a value of 0 red, 0 green, and 255 blue. The color black has 0 for every color. So again, R, G, B colors here. And what we're going to do is before we draw the rectangles to each tick, we're just going to change the color of, and whoops, sorry, need to one extra too many parentheses there, we're just going to change the color of our screen again back to black. So if we run our module now, we see that when I press the space bar, our rectangle is nicely moving up and down and we no longer have this tail because every tick or every frame of our game, our screen is taking on, is being completely black again, and then we draw the rectangle again. And if I move it, all of those rectangles are no longer seen because they're completely overwritten because we're making everything black again. We're completely filling it up with black. And so that eliminates the tail. And since we only draw a rectangle once every tick or every frame, um, we see only one rectangle on the screen here too. And just through specifying the space bar, we can move it down in the y direction because we set here, if the press, if the space bar is pressed, then we increment y by 5.